Hey y'all, welcome back to Literate Liquors. I'm your host, John Hardness, and here with me is Parsec Award nomin Parsec Award nominated podcaster. Shit, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Parsec Award nominated podcaster Lauren Scribe Harris from the Pendragon Variety Podcast. Ooh, thanks for having me, John. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> Cheers. Salud. Salud. That was a lot of syllables, and I've been drinking for hours at this point. I'm impressed that it only took you three tries to get it right. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> So, tell us a little bit about Pendragon Variety Podcast. Well, Pendragon Variety Podcast is a roundtable discussion podcast for aspiring writers of genre fiction. It is hosted by myself and five of my good friends from high school and college, and we're all ladies, and we mostly center around the process of writing, some literary tropes, and some of the themes that we're noticing in current day fiction and publishing. And if you are at a science fiction or fantasy con in the southeast or mid-Atlantic region and a couple of attractive young ladies come up to you and they are holding a microphone, it probably means that you're going to end up on a podcast in the lobby of the hotel singing Daydream Believer to... Um, unamused glances from hotel security. <laughs> that has to be one of my favorite moments from StellarCon this past that, year. That, that was a bag full of awesome and I you know still kind of miss Davy Jones but anyway <laughs> so what kind of things are you reading right now and what are you drinking while you're reading them? Well at the moment I'm drinking a SoCo and Coke. Okay. It's a little too sweet for my everyday taste. That's a lot of saccharin. That's like Harlequin romance type drinking there. Yeah, and I don't tend to read Harlequin romance. I mean, Nora Roberts is about as romance as I get. You know, I don't think I've ever read anything she's written under that name. J.D. Robb? Yeah, I've read yeah. some J.D. Robb stuff and I enjoy that. And I really admire anyone who can churn out that many damn books. She is very prolific. And I think yes. the thing that I liked about her romance fiction was that it wasn't just um, plot what plot. Mm -hmm. It was, there was an actual plot that had, you know, bearing on the story okay. beyond the, just the, are they going to do it? Which, you know, it's a romance novel. They're going to do, do it. They're going to do it. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but at the moment, I am actually catching up on a couple of books. I'm finishing The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Brilliant. It is amazing. I'm swapping back and forth actually between the audiobook and the uh, print, the hardcover copy that I got. A stellar. The Chihuahua copy. Killer. The Chihuahua Killer. Yes. <laughs> I had uh, I had DB Jackson on here uh, last episode. Yes, it's a different day here at Con Caroline, as you can tell, because I'm wearing a different shirt. Yeah, it's still night. I'm still drinking out of the same plastic cup, but it really, it's a different day. He's big on recycling, green living right here. Word. <laughs> and David explained to me the exact definition of a Chihuahua killer. It has to be a chest high drop of a hardback addition onto the head of a Chihuahua. And it has to have enough velocity to actually crack the skull or crack the spine? Uh, basically, the Chihuahua just has to bite the bullet. Gotcha. Okay. And really, Name of the Wind, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Name of the Wind would do it. Yeah. Definitely. So what um, else are you reading? I'm also reading the second book in the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences series oh, okay. by uh, T. Morris and Pip Ballantyne. If you are into podcasts, I'm also on a podcast with T. Morris. It's called Fit to Write. Oh, cool. It's a podcast about writers... Um, making calories count as much as words. So we are currently uh, on our fifth episode. I would count all the calories I take in, but math, 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 math. And I got into writing to not have to deal with that, so I just deal with being fat. And that's some of the stuff we deal with. We deal with writers' lifestyles um, and, and fitness, because it's okay. really difficult to be fit and have a day job and have a sedentary hobby and have another sedentary hobby and still actually manage to keep a healthy lifestyle. So uh, we have three This authors. is true. I can attest. Well, <laughs> except for the whole day job bit, but that whole sedentary lifestyle and sedentary hobby, because, you know, I don't burn many more calories playing poker than I do right. writing. So. And uh, I'm, I have a, a full-time day job sitting at a phone answering queue. Ugh. 
and I am a writer and a podcaster. So I don't do a lot of hobby getting around. Yeah, we haven't done a single outside. jumping jack since we've started this interview. Yeah, we have. Get, we're gonna keep, get up. We're gonna keep the streak alive, there, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah You're not really. Not gonna do any jumping jacks for me. No. How to push up? <laughs> the only push up I've seen in years is an ice cream one, darling. <laughs> Really, I do not keep this particular girlish figure by by just fucking off. I work at being a fat slob. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> so I'm reading the second Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences novel, which is called The Janus Affair. Awesome. Um, I'm in the middle of uh, the first one. Phoenix Rising. Phoenix Rising. It is a very entertaining series. I'm enjoying the heck out of it. It's probably my favorite steampunk that I've read. You know, I'm enjoying it as well. I have... Um, I also have to tag team that with a one or two other books because steampunk is. I never read one book at once. Well, steampunk is not my genre, mm -hmm. and the heightened language um, feels a little much like work for me. Right, gotcha. So I love the characters. I really enjoy them. It's um, it's the genre that mm -hmm. makes me work a little harder. Oh, I gotcha. Well, it's kind of it's been described as the steampunk X Files. Yeah, I totally buy and, that. And I find it really, really. Apt. <laughs> yeah. A really apt description of that. But I'm enjoying the heck out of it. The second book is yeah. just as good, if not better, than the cool. first. Cool. So what do you suggest our viewers should drink while they're reading The Name of the Wind by Pat Rothfuss? Let's start there. The Name of the Wind by Pat Rothfuss. Now, I'm not a big beer drinker, but if I were a beer drinker, I would say you would need a pretty good stout for that one. Yeah, I'm but thinking, well, and I'm thinking it could depend on which parts of the book you're reading, yeah. because the frame of the book, the framed narrative, the very much feels like a, a stout. good stout, yeah. yeah. But the, uh, the, the flashbacks of the story from mm -hmm. when he's young, now that could be something more like a cider or... Um, yeah. Or, I think a good woodchuck pear cider yeah. would go down Now, like, I can drink cider, so I would probably go with a, a woodchuck mm -hmm. or something like that as well. Um, and, you know, if you can't do that, maybe maybe a, a wine, a Riesling? Yeah, yeah, definitely something lighter, even a Pinot Grigio maybe. Yeah, but, Pinot Grigio would be good as well. Oh, uh, well, hell, I'm out of red. Oh, um, no, God, no. Yeah. I can I can only handle Soko straight, and even then, only in limited doses. While <laughs> this playing is only poker. because we ran out of rum. Fair enough. The rum was gone. Uh, that's a shame. It, yeah. So, Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, one of my favorite books of the past five years, probably, and um, Wise Man's Fear I think is even better, which is the really? second book I'm in the series. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I read the first paragraph of the prologue to Name of the Wind and had writer's block for a month. I felt like that I felt like that kid who had taken two guitar lessons and then went to see Clapton. Uh, I, I listened to the first chapter of Name of the Wind and by about I think the third paragraph I was in my car driving to work and I just wanted to pull over and go, what's the point? Yeah, really, if, <laughs> if, if Pat Rothfuss wasn't such a nice damn guy with an awesome beard that I'm totally jealous of. Me. Yeah, I do. I have a I little have bit of beard envy. I have beard envy, and I've never wanted a beard. Yeah, so I do have a little beard envy for Pat. And if he weren't such a nice dude, I'd really hate him for being so effing talented. Oh yeah, I'd want to punch him in the face. But and he's a really nice guy. He I went to the elevator at StellarCon, and I didn't have my book on me, and I was leaving, and I was just like, I wanted to find you. And he's like, another time, another con. <laughs> <laughs> so. So yeah, he's uh, he's a pile of awesome. The book is awesome. Check out uh, Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Check out a good Riesling with it or a Woodchuck Pear Cider. And also check out the Pendragon Variety Podcast with Lauren Scribe Harris. That's all we've got for you tonight. Um, I'm going in search of more booze. And as always, please remember to drink responsibly, but read recklessly. <laughs>